Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm very excited today. It's the first time, and I'll like ever basically that I've managed to have a guest on the channel and uh, I'm joined by everybody in the comment section's favourite CJ Novo 992 CJ welcome hello along. everyone mate this hello is, I mean I've been hello. on your channel quite regular I'm on there every well close enough every week when Celtic are dropping points anyway um, so I know what it's like to be out there so this is a taste for you you get to see what the yeah it is I, I tell it you know I mean this is going to be one video I'll just skip you know what I mean I won't check up because well, I'm feeling like my, my ears are burning already. Oh, I feel like you can have a wee sky through the comments section. You might enjoy that. <laughs> I, I bet like you'd love it. Today, CJ is joining me for an, an old firm based video. That's no surprise there. You'd expect to hear that. Uh, and what, today we're going to try and determine the greatest old firm start we're living since the year 2000. Showing sure off my age there. Since the year I was born. Trying to keep it oh. relatively modern. Um, obviously there's mm -hmm. a lot of players that are going to miss this I'm sure CJ that you've seen some great players back in the the olden days aye, uh, the, the, the 1600s the 1600s <laughs> aye yeah, only players who are sadly going to be missing the cup but we're going to try and keep it for 2000 and onwards and hopefully we'll come up with a relatively even side I hope you're ready CJ. yeah it's, it's, going to, it's going to be pretty difficult but we'll have to go on out with the mindset of making an actual good team that's capable of winning and also combining so Aye, that's been exactly. tough because I've just picked I mean, a lot of Rangers boys, but you've, you've told me that's not that happened. So our differences aside, and we could just come up with a strong start in eleven, one that could challenge for the Champions League. Aye, go down and win English football. That really piss them off, wouldn't oh, it? Yeah, it <laughs> right. So enough of that. We'll get right into it. And I guess the only point we're going to stick with a four four two. I think we agreed on that, didn't we? Four four two. Yeah. Right, so we'll start for the back as uh, it seems only suitable to do. So we'll start with a goalkeeper. CJ, I'm going to give you the honours of starting us off. Who do you think would be the ideal goalkeeper for this side? Uh, well, there's only one choice. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, from the Rangers' point of view, there was a couple of it was in absolutely my mind. Like I was thinking of Klaus, who obviously played for Dortmund, came here, was brilliant. But there's only one choice. It's Alan freaking McGregor. Oh. Dives to the left, he dives to the right. You know what I mean? He just oh, does this bits. Ah, oh, 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 oh. uh, no, I. Uh, <laughs> That's a bit fiery. <laughs> right, exactly. I bet. I think but, uh, if you look at him, like he was here first, then he left, then he came back, and he's just as good, if not better. And that shows he's got a class goalkeeper. The level of consistency of the years and that as well. His appearances, his clean sheets, his big penalty saves. Can you for a couple of painful one of them to turn tides and titles? And he's just a big character. Well, talking about penalty I love, saves, I love I'm watching with somebody who's a. Uh equally good at penalty saves so I was thinking and I just had to involve and I have to think of the one man who I think should be in the team and that's Arthur Boric he's my favourite Celtic player of all time and I, I, I knew know, he was going and I don't know if I'm ready enough to let Alan McGregor be in the side of a Boric but Alan McGregor I can admit is a fantastic keeper but like I, all, we'll, all we'll say is when you look at Boric right, he's a, like if we're all being fair that he's a very very good goalkeeper for a certain amount of time but I think if if you look back towards these, maybe the last six, maybe even the last year, there was a prone mistake there. You know what I mean? There was always that odd, like, True. the flappy hands. Uh, he started off very, very well. Level of consistency, but towards the end, he did certainly start to dip. And I think yeah. Alan McGregor's, the reason I'd pick him over is because he's always just been consistent all the way, actually, through. I can't believe I'm actually going to utter the words and let it happen, but I will let you have McGregor on this one. We'll go oh! ahead and have McGregor. Just purely because moving up the park, I feel like there's going to be a lot of selections where I will be trying my best to edge some Celtic players in. It's my favourite player ever, and I clearly think Boric is better than McGregor, but McGregor's been here longer. Um, and do you know what? He's, he's, for his age, he's doing well as well. And we're focusing, I'm trying yeah. to focus more on the time that are Celtic and Rangers. I could go out and say Boric has played at Fiorentina, Bournemouth, blah, 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 but try and focus yeah. more on their time in Scottish football. I'll let McGregor slip in and go. So moving on oh, to right back. We'll move on to right back. And uh, I've got one man who I think is the easy the easy choice. I don't know who your choice is going to be, but I'm going for Jackie McNamara. I think Jackie McNamara is one of the greatest fullbacks to grace Scottish football. Over 250 appearances for Celtic. Young player of the year. Mm -hmm. Players player of the year. Footballer of the year. Even up until 2004. I mean, this is, this is a span of 10 years playing for Celtic. And he was part of the team just before 2000, mind you, that stopped 10 in a row. Um, massive, massive player, and I don't think many players can compete with him. Who's your choice for right back? See, if I'm honest with you, I, I built like a Ryan's eleven. Like I was trying to think, so I could counter argue in my own head. 
I never had a right back pick because I couldn't pick one. Like genuinely, I had no idea. So that one's a surprise. Good player, dodgy manager. We all know the way to do. Uh, but Alan Hutton was on my side of things on the right back because there was a spell in Scottish football from 2000. And, I'd say 2004 to 2008 he was the best in the country. You know what I mean? He got a nine million pound move, which back then in Scottish football was absolutely unheard of. You know what I mean? Mm. And you know what I mean? He went doing his spurs. I, I kind of paid attention on him. He started off well, got injured, fell away, had a red nut, and then sort of for there. But on his Rangers days, the Champions League games, especially he was when I was obviously sitting watching it, was always the outlet for Rangers. You'd give it to him and he would just go. And for a couple of years, I think he was maybe even the best player in the country, maybe the last two years overall in Scottish football. And that's a right back. So it's, it's a hard one. I can use was maybe there a lot longer. Mine's only got 94 appearances and only scored two goals. Mm-hmm. So, so you've kind of bet me there. Versus 250 appearances. I think we should maybe think about putting McNamara in, maybe. Thinking about it, since you actually gave me, like, Shagger or Boric, and Boric is your favourite player, I can understand looking at it. But the only thing I will say is, but going forward, the night, like, the games, how many people shouldn't really be reflected. It should be what they actually done in Scottish football. So I don't think that should be a thing through actually out, because I genuinely think for two years, I mean, Hutton was what just... I can say about McNamara if you want me to, you know... No, no. I, I Kenny's got the level of consistency. Old, so. blah, 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 blah. And all I will say is the first couple of years with Alan Hutton, bit dodgy. Bit dodgy at the back. You know what I mean? So I'll give you that. I'll give you that one, mate. Ah, there you go. I'll give you that. There you go. So Jackie McNamara is going to take the right back spot. So center halves, this is a bit more, you know, complex. There's, there's so White. many options. So many yeah. possible options. And this one, actually, I had to turn to Twitter for one of my options as well. You may have seen a couple of posts you that put up. I don't know if you passed them. Um, ask for the people to help me decide. I don't follow you. You don't, do you, you don't no. follow me? <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, yeah, close on. But anyway, so centre halves, uh, we'll, we'll just kind of name our two and then we'll try and decide right. in a good, decent partnership. Um, since I've done right back first, I'll let you go ahead with your two centre halves. On you go. So my two centre halves, because I was trying to think of balance with this to you, like trying to balance cal- characters, strengths, and I went with two absolute beast centre backs, in my personal opinion. One for Rangers and one for Celtic, by the way. Oh. I went with Big Amoruso because there was a point where Amoruso was just just untouchable. I'd, I'd be mm-hmm. fine. And to partner him, I went with Van Dyke, like Virgil, because oh. I just look at that partnership and I'm saying to myself, damn. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Do that's what? that's I, ridiculous. We don't even need to debate that much because my partnership um, was Van Dyke and um, I had oh. Amoruso slash Bobo Baldi. So, um, oh really? Right, okay. Aye. okay. So I mean, we don't really need to dispute that much. I think pretty much we've decided on a centre back partnership. There, we've got Van Dyke and I. We had it there. We did. Aye, I, I mean, I thought it was going to be a lot longer of a discussion for that. Uh, the only reason I had Baldi mm-hmm. is because he was an absolute machine. Um, bit hot headed at times. He was always one of the players that would always get stuck in at corners right. and everything. Him and Amoruso right. had some amount of bars. Right. I, mean, I don't think they would have played well with each other. Um, <laughs> oh, no, probably, probably a bit, you know, mm, dodgy. Red cards flying such. Um, the only thing I'd be scared of having Amaroos and Van Dyke in the same team is when you get a free kick for 40 yards out. Imagine <laughs> them two arguing with each other to see who takes it. I'll, that I'll would be a battle. Don't let Van Dyke take it off. <laughs> nah, it's, oh, what about Amaroos? Hit, hit the bar for about 50 yards out uh, against Aberdeen. That's true. I've never <laughs> seen that. Do I, well, we've, we've settled that. That was easy. You saved time yeah, I'll there. Give, I'll so, give you that. I mean, that's a strong part. I mean, look at Van Dyke, arguably the best centre half in world football right now. Um, yeah, and Amira so obviously a, a Rangers icon. So there you go, two phenomenal. Centers. Yeah, there was a couple of choices. Like you could have got Magic Bagheera and everything in there, but I was trying to get the balance right. And I think Amira so maybe the more out and out defender at the two. Van Dyke made of the ball playing. I think they actually fit. That's where I'd go with that. Fantastic. Right, left back. Um, for me, there hasn't been a great selection of left backs over the time. I can't since the year two thousand. There's only one option I can go for that. Can't tell me. I mean, over everybody. Emilio Zagiri, Lee Hmm. I'm going for Tierney. I don't know who your option is. Let me, let me hear. Right, okay. So, I, I knew you were picking that. Can I just be honest? I actually even put a wee C because I thought he'd be the captain of your team. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so my, pick, uh, my pick is a Dutch international who continued to get international caps while at Rangers until the day he actually retired. And that's Arthur Newman. Played for 1998 to 2018 games, three goals, 45 caps for Paul just missed that out and out consistency. Obviously, scored that long range screamer against Celtic, which surprised. I always remember the scream that my dad made in that goal because he just, mm-hmm. before he just miss hit it and he just went, Aye. ah! Like that. It was brilliant. Like, yeah, like he was just yeah. like, 
I don't know. The only thing I will say is I was just recently just watched um, like the English pundits pick the best of our Premier League, and they were talking about like um, Aguero and stuff like that. And what they continue to say is they're still playing right now, so it's hard to judge where they could go. They could fall for mm-hmm. Cliff next year. He could be, you know what I mean? I'm not saying no. he is going to be terrible, but he could yeah, just really just rest. You just never know. Like so it's hard to pick. Who was fantastic player of the year? Broke his leg. Never was the same. Yeah, yeah well, I'm going to be speaking about someone very similar like that later on in the video, but for me, I just think the fact that he was still getting caps for Holland round about that time, he's still actually a pretty damn decent team. Mm. And for the balance of my team, we've obviously got Jackie McNamara now in at the right back, so Newman on either side, more defensive sided fullbacks, I'd say. Right. And I think they would keep the other two centre backs who like to wander and check. I'm, for me, it'd I'm be. I'm going to say to the fans look, if we revisit this video in three years' time, Tierney will probably be the option. So I'm going to let you have Newman in this situation just purely for the fact that Tierney is what 21 22 years old yeah. long way to go um obviously he's had a fantastic career so far double treble winner invincible sale but there's so much he can do and um he's probably gonna be a big player he'll probably moved in England at some point so right now purely for balancing that as well it's a decent option to go with the, the Rangers choice sadly Mm-hmm. Well done, mate. That that was brave. I'm I'm, I'm gonna check the comments yeah. now. That's it. I'm back well, in. You've well, won me well, back. I, I, I'm probably gonna lose half my subscribers now. But um, always in my heart, I'll go with Kieran Tierney. Always, always. I heart Tierney will be the yeah, heart of my team. Right, right, man. The only thing I would say is, on you go. The only thing I would say is, um, if you're maybe younger and you haven't actually checked it out for Newman, you just think Ryan's lost the plot, go and check him out. Very, very classy fullback. Obviously, international, definitely. He's, he's worthy of top end. To get any hall, yeah, the only one was... consistently well playing for Rangers is impressive. Like, that, that yeah, one team, Scottish football, like, yeah. Team has always been, you know, a great team. Um, so, I mean, mm-hmm. that's an impressive thing to do. Um, right midfielder. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I had to go with, I think... I mean, I don't know who you're going to use to rebuttal the point here, but I had to go with somebody, and that's Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, mm-hmm. One of the most technically gifted players to ever grace Scottish football, I'd say. Free kick maestro, one of the best free kick takers you'll ever see. Scored that absolute screamer against Rangers, if you remember. Alan McGregor, where was he for that? I mean, no chance. Um, the ball at his feet was just absolutely marvellous. Caused problems for players... Of, of any quality European nights magic domestically magic and he's a player who I think it's hard to compete with but you may have an option who's yours that one's surprising because I thought you were going to pick someone else I'll maybe talk about that later on in the video but I've I've kind of I wouldn't say I've cheated here but I've tried to uh, tweak my team because I need to fit him in um, and the reason I um, he's obviously one of my favourite players of all time it's going to be Peter Lovingkrantz and I'd play him out in the right I think if you're looking out for someone who's a big game player, I mean, you just look at his record against Celtic. He was always there every single time. My dad still still says to this day that Peter Levin is better as a striker than he was ever any, anywhere else. But mm. for me, he naturally obviously played left mid for Rangers, but he did occasionally play it in the right and obviously done that later on in his career. 129 games, 37 goals, 2000 to 2006. And yeah, his record to the old form is just a joke. The ultimate big team player. I suppose great. But if you're looking for a natural right midfielder, I know, have Nakamura I know. And that's it. I mean, who knows? If you come to that left hand side, maybe you could put Lovin Cranston unless you've got somebody else in mind. Like, oh, I've got a big boy there. Oh, I've got. Oh, have you? Uh, I've got. Well, I've got a knockout blow there. I don't know. There's something for me that just says we have to go for Nakamura here. Just um, incredible, and he's Hops. a right midfielder. Can we put Lovin Cranston as the first sub impact sub? Can we put that's him? Fine by me. Do that if you like. You can be the the twelfth man. Because when Nakamura gets a knock, Livingkrantz can fill in because Naka injury record towards the end. That's what I'm saying, though. I mean, granted, he was... And you've got to remember that about Nakamura as well. When he was at Celtic, he wasn't a young guy. Like, he was coming up from his 30s, in his 30s, and he was still absolutely marvellous. And Scott, I mean, he won the league, like, big moments he thrived on. Look at the free kicks. uh, Man Man United. Man United and such. He's just a remarkable player for me. Sorry, CJ, Nakamura's over on that right mid. But I'll let you have Livingkrantz. As that impacts up, he's the first name. Oh, oh, we'll stay, mate. Looking at our right hand side, not got much pace. We're struggling that side. You know what I mean? Uh, struggling. Uh, true, true. Aye, it's a weak true, point. true. But maybe in that left, hand, maybe, maybe through the middle is where we thrive, though. Because here we go. Yeah, I can imagine. Us. This is going to be easy. Uh, is, is it going to be easy? Is it? Let's see. Let's let right, So I started there with right mid. Let's you go again. Who's your partnership in the middle of the park? Got a feeling you've kind of set me up here because you probably know who has to be picked in the Celtic end. So I'm not going to speak about that yet. I'm actually going to speak about it from the Rangers thing. As much as I love Peter Livingkrantz and he's one of my, he's one of my favourite players. My absolute ultimate 
has to be, in my opinion, one of the best players I've ever seen, and that's old Barry Barry, Barry 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 Fergus. And, you know what I mean? The guy right. captained Rangers when there was big personalities in the early 2000s and his early 20s, 21, 22, massive Champions League games. He strolled it. Um, his first spell was brought in 97 to 2003. Went down to Blackburn, got very, very unlucky with a, a, a really, really bad injury. Um, came back up here, done well again, scored a lot more goals because when he actually came back, he's more on an offensive side. Then obviously he left again. But for me, what was it over 288 games, 44 goals? Barry Ferguson, captain, leader, for a right age when there were really, really big personalities in there. And that shows that the managers clearly saw something in him. Barry Ferguson has to be. You know what I mean? As has to be there. I hate Barry Ferguson, he was on my sheet to be in this team because he was a fantastic player. As much as I don't oh. like him as a player, as much as it frustrated me seeing Barry Ferguson in the park, like, he, he, he's a great footballer. Uh, mm. It was just like, it was really good at what, the captain in his side and taking a leadership. Um, so I, yeah, I think he was a nice true player. captain, like a leader, like ah, a leader of men. You could see it, like every big game he was screaming, mm -hmm. um, and obviously getting us to a European final and everything like that. That was all underdone by Barry Ferguson. No scared to anybody, and yeah, has to be in. my captain as well for the team. By the way, was that your captain? My question is, who did you have partnered him? Is it? Do you have? Right, if I'm honest with you, there you go. Just kick your tail, soon. If, if I'm honest with you, I actually had three people wrote down, right? I had, mm -hmm. um, this might surprise you, I actually had Paul Lambert first I was looking at, obviously won the, the, the Champions League uh, with Dortmund, yeah, I had him there. I also had still in Petrov because I actually quite rated him as a football player, obviously a great story not coming back. Um, but when I was actually trying to look at the mirror, the balance of the team, and even more so now that we've got someone who, Nakamura doesn't like to track back, I need someone who is is going to protect the back four more so than maybe a Barry Ferguson will. Well, Barry Ferguson goes forward. There's gonna be one man so defending. Certain, is there a certain captain leader legend coming to your mind? Well, and, well, I've picked a Rangers fan to be fair. His name's Scott Brown. That's <laughs> it. I've got, um, I've got Bar Barry Ferguson and Scott Brown as my two centre mids. To be fair, my life is very difficult here because I think we sh I should allow Ferguson to be in the team. Absolutely no question. Ferguson's got that place, but the exact three players were the three players who I was stuck between, and part of me really wants really? to pick That's Paul. Cool. Yep, they were the three I was stuck between, and re part of me really wants to pick Paul Lambert. Paul Lambert was mm -hmm. the man who captained the team to the UEFA Cup final. Uh, he won four league titles, two Scottish Cups, two League Cups, won the Player of the Year in 2002. And he had almost 200, 200 appearances for the club. So it's not like he, it was just like Celtic was a, a wee break from after winning the Champions League with Dortmund. Like no, no. Was, oh, just got, he was there. He was there for a good solid five, six years. And he was very mm -hmm. impressive in that time. But what you're saying about Brown is right about defending that back four. Um, and Brown has, you know, been here for what? Eight league titles in a row almost now. Um, 12 years on that since 2007 when we signed Thompson the same year. No. Right, exactly. I mean, so he's been, you know, an integral part of the Celtic side. And as much as Lambert has those legendary accolades behind him and that, Brown, um, maybe without Brown in a Celtic side, I don't think things could have been this, maybe the same for the last 12 years or whatever. Um, all the way through, he's. Um, maintained a strong career apart from maybe that wee season under Ronnie Dyla where he was fiddling about with injuries um, but you know he came back for that injury strong led us to an invincible treble then when next season won player of the season so Scott Brown Barry Ferguson does your centre mid partnership I've got to say one I absolutely despise Scott Brown you can this um, but uh -huh. <laughs> I've always said when Scotland everything that they needed him at certain points I think especially in, in his full seasons like he was obviously rumoured to be wait, there you, go. Oh, no. there you go, you're alright son, you're alright Right, okay, um, so well, I'll just start again for saying I hate Scott ah, Brown go. Ah, yeah, yeah. So I've got to just say I obviously hate Scott Brown, my passion Like genuinely, it's just mm -hmm. everything I hate right now uh, But obviously in 2007 there was a big rumour that he was obviously going to be joining Rangers That is what we were singing to the Hibs fans that we were signing Scott Brown Then we obviously done the switch, we signed Kevin Thompson, the rest is history Kevin Thompson by the way has still actually done really well for Rangers mm -hmm. But one of the guys that was just unluckily with injuries So... The thing you've got to pick with Scott Brown is since 2007, um, he's been very, very consistent by that one year where he was injured, and you're going to need that in a team. So as annoying as much as I didn't want to pick him, if I'm picking Barry Ferguson to be the more creative side, I need somebody like an animal-esque mm -hmm. in there, and he's got the, the longevity over Kevin Thompson and people like that, maybe even Paul Lambert as well. So yeah, that's why he's in there. Fair play. Uh, on the left mid position, I feel like this is one that you can easily beat me in. Um throw away your suggestion uh, I mean I think this who are you going to have take us. Um, the only option that I could take was uh, Aidan Nagidi who really get me wrong. Aiden <laughs> I mean can't even get me wrong though I mean it's Celtic still a very impressive player 
um, and broke records. I mean, ten million quid moved to Russia. Um, yeah, and he was he was a very very skillful player, caused problems for a lot of teams. But I mean, when that's your best option as a left midfielder, it's not too hard to top. And I'm not taking away anything for the beginning of his time at Celtic because it was remarkable, uh, and I love to watch them. Very entertaining. But um, the way he left the club and such left a lot of people so. Um, so, I mean, who's your option? Who, who could you even who, who could top that? Well, Rangers, thankfully, have been very, very blessed in left mids. I could genuinely spend all day listening. Them. Obviously, we could have had Living Krantz, who um, is the ultimate big game player. But there's someone that I, I'd be slaughtered by if I never picked him in. His name's George Alberts, a.k.a. The Hammer. 1996 to 2001, 156 games, 58 goals. That is an incredible start for very a left statistic. midfielder. Probably the best left foot that's ever been in Scottish football, I'd say. Like, the genuinely just an absolute rocket from anywhere. I just watched them in Blackpool. I obviously went down for the charity game, watched them. He's still got that unbelievable power. The legs are away, but he's still got the power. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it has to be the hammer. To be fair, has I to think be. We're, we're going to probably slot him in for the left mid. Um, Aidan McGeady, impressive player from a young age. But his time at Celtic um, is probably easily topped by players. So, um, that are just better mm-hmm. options so there we go we've got and his goal to game ratio is absolute standing yeah, from left a, mid as well when you actually look at it yeah I can't deny that and I'll try nah. to base my advice right going up front two strikers to end off the team I mean there's one that, that, that we can't even dispute it Henrik Larson's there Henrik Larson is the greatest player to ever grace Scottish football Um, I'd, I'll give you a since 2000 because I still think Loudrop's better. That's where we're always going to... Di- we're never, ever going to... Maybe even Gaza as well. But that's a different... Mm, there's some maverick mm, talent. But mm, for me, it's Loudrop's always been my favourite. And then you go older. We can avoid that today. We can right. avoid since that 2000. Today. You can say since aye. 2000. Mm, yeah. um, but aye, Henrik Larson is in the team. There's no discussion. I mean, this is the only man ever capable of coming to Scottish football and winning the European Golden Boot. Ever. Alan yes. McCoyst. Done it twice. They, 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 they. He actually done it back to back as well, to be fair. Uh, they, uh, they, they just proved me an absolute But man. so that's not since two thousand, so I'll give you that. I'll give you I'll give you uh, uh, The SPFL era. What I'll, I'll say is, that. what I'll do is I'll edit out that part of you <laughs> saying Alan McCoy's done it and then we'll just skip right to the bit where you say since two thousand. Just to make me look good tonight, we'll do that. That's fine. But yeah, Henrik Larson's in the team. Henrik Larson proven not just the fact that because it was Scottish football he could do it, he proved it when he went to Barcelona. Proved it at Manchester United that very short spell. He's still influential, and the, the people who worked around him will tell you that. He's, there's, no, there's no conversation about it, there's no discussion. Henrik Larson's in the team. I don't know who you have partnered him. I turned to Twitter to find another option. Rangers have had All some right. solid strikers over the last, um, what, 19 years. I mean, especially when years. I was, um, you know, around the age of like 9, 10, that. The member they had, Nacho Novo, Chris Boyd, um, just two names straight away. Um, who were always mm. dangerous? Um, Nikita Yelovich was in there as well. This is just as I was getting, uh, you know, great yeah. options. But C- CJ, who would you partner with Henrik Larson? Because I don't think my partner on the Celtic side of things, um, because I'm going with what the fans want me to pick, will probably right. top your option. So let me hear your Rangers option and go with Larson. Right, I'm going to go with a player. I don't know how much people actually can is actually going to be watching this video. Maybe the Rangers boys are clicking on will can, but his name's Michael Moles. From 1999 to 2004, Michael Moles, before he broke his leg and everything like that with a long challenge, Michael Moles was just destined. He was getting international caps. He was scoring goals for fun. He came here. We literally, he was changing the game with his quickness, his Cruyff turns. Like, genuinely, you can ask any Rangers player, maybe even some, like, Balan Celtic boys, there's a strong belief that he would have bet Alan McCoy's records if he didn't break his leg. Because remember, Larson obviously broke, obviously had that bad injury. He came back and he managed to recover. Most unfortunately, never. He lost that quickness. He lost that turn. Very much similar to like Torres when he got that knee injury. He was never the same. That was Moles, but in 2002, three, four, like that. I've genuinely, I think before the injury, he is one of the most talented players I have ever, ever seen. And I spoke long and hard with my dad because we were talking about all of them. And yeah, I know he starts 98 games, 38 goals, isn't it great? But look at that start before he ended up getting injured and then obviously he came back. For me, Michael Moles was just just unbelievable. I, I love Moles and yeah, the injury really stole everything from right. I feel like this is one that I can dispute and perhaps even win and take oh. a home a Celtic 
top, top two. I mean, I gave you McGregor, so right now, this could be nice. Hey, I'll give you Jackie. Yeah, you give it Jackie, I suppose. But Jackie is better than Alan Hutton. Come on. Come on, is he? How many trophies and such? That's it, though. We'll move on. We'll move on for right back. Um, the people wanted me to go with Moussa Dembele. Um, Are you now, joking? I love Moussa Dembele. I absolutely adore him. I've got to show him my wall. Stop looking know. at the picture, Ryan. There it's there. Right there in front of my I eyes. I fucking knew it. Miss you. But I can't go with Moussa Dembele over Chris Sutton. Chris Sutton, along with Henrik Larson, made up an outstanding top two. And for me, personally, I think it could be a better option than Michael Bowles. Just purely, and it's a shame that he did get injured, but Sutton never. And Sutton had that five-year career at Celtic, um, where he won, you know, what, four league titles, got to the UEFA Cup final, won the League Cup, won the Scottish Cup, um, just a phenomenal player, and had a good record as well. And this is a player as well, you got to remember, who was a Premier League winner. SAS, the original SAS, Shearer and Sutton. Oh. Shearer and Sutton. And he, he came, he's a wanker, he, though. He's moved to Chelsea, didn't it work out? He came to Celtic. Ryan, you're never it, getting Sutton in the team, mate. You're never. I think, that, that, I we may as well keep retiring for four days. But, but, I mean, let's think about it. Let's think about it. If you've got to put bias aside, right, and you have to judge in two careers, if you have to go with your option of Michael Moles. Ah, but we're not talking about careers. We're talking about um, at their best. Well, at their, well, at their best. Well, Chris Sutton was... Not, maybe not his best. Maybe he was at his best, best longer, but I'd certainly when he say it was as talented that as was, Michael Moles. That was I don't feel like you kind of Michael Moles is. Like, you I don't really know who he is. I've heard the name. Michael Moles, right? I may or not go to watch him play. I recognise the name. I don't know really much about him, but I mean, you're looking at a player here that I'm offering that was in a UEFA Cup final and was very mm. influential in that side. UEFA Cup final along with and you've got to remember Chris Sutton had to compete with two fantastic strikers as well wasn't it just Larson on that team you had John Hartson that is a very very good he failed his Rangers medical failed his Rangers medical and where did they end up he ended up at Celtic and ended up scoring big goals and big games as well Um, for me Chris Sutton has to go in I mean just because purely no he, he, he had that five long years there where he was scoring goals consistently and make just because yeah, I get that. How many goals did Sutton score? Uh, I think about sixty-five, something like that. Run that is 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 maybe not exactly. I'll, I'll be able to. How many it. appearances though? I can't think could be there, which may not be right, but could be. Chris Sutton had one hundred and sixty appearances for Celtic with sixty-three goals, which is not a bad mm-hmm. record whatsoever. That's a very good record considering you're playing alongside the greatest striker in Scottish football history. So well, it's good history. No, it's Scottish football. <laughs> Unless you want to count Jimmy McGraw, then we can throw him in. <laughs> um, all I'll say is, I actually, I followed, I fired up a tweet because I, I kind of imagine we would all would have a disagreement here. I thought you were actually going to be picking someone else for the striker, and then Sutton, to be honest. But if you actually check on the Rangers thread, for me, pure football and ability has to be Michael Moles. Some shout for De Boer, if I'm honest. But if you check it, Moles' ability was unmatched. It's literally Moles, Moles, basically all the way I doing remember. it. Go and check that. But remember, your Twitter has got a lot of Rangers following. Now, if I was to repeat that uh, on this... On no, this you, Kim, what you should have done, Kim, what you should have done is, who's the best Rangers striker since 2000? The best Rangers striker for 2000. I think you would, I think most people, it's old enough, would say Moles. Imagine I'm Moles, I'm like his quickness, his talent, and you've got Larson's finishing ability. Because Moles was actually made of a... When I say an out-and-out striker, he was merely the pocket player, just in behind the striker. It would get the ball, beat someone, have a shot or lay it off. This was a guy who was getting international caps for Holland in the late 90s, by the way, when they were actually pretty damn decent. You know what I mean? He never did get many because he obviously had that horrific injury against Oliver Kahn. Mm. Horrific. But you're looking at someone who can welcome the ball, bring it, then give it to Larson, who will score. For me, I think it's a better build-up play. Pace I as well. It's got pace, right? We need pace. We need pace in the team. I think that Chris Sutton would be a remarkable oh my God. option. I think a remarkable no. option, CJ. Do you want to pick someone else? Do you want to give Void them both and pick someone else? Because we've also got, if you want to talk about goals, like you were arguing with Chris Sutton, there's a certain Chris Boyd who has more goals hmm. than Henrik. Do you want to Do you want to start to go on that route? I mean, I'm surprised you didn't pick Boyd to partner Henrik. First, first spell Boyd was brilliant. Second spell mm. Boyd, 
Yeah. No, non-existent. Yeah. Non-existent. Yeah. So, yeah, so, unfortunately. Um, uh, we could, like, and I think they would cancel each other out. Like, Larson and Boyd would run into the same spots. For me, partnership-wise, Larson right. would go there, Moe's in behind a for a partnership. If you think of partnership-wise... Think how good Larson and Sutton were with that Celtic team behind them. I always, I always thought Hartson was better. I, See, if you'd said Hartson, you'd have a better grand I piano. personally prefer John Hartson, but Sutton's got the more impressive record and probably would get yeah. the majority of votes if I was to pop up. He, 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 he got more votes than John Hartson in the poll that I put up. Yeah. So I think the yeah. Celtic fans behind me would agree with Sutton over Hartson. Um, but I mean, you look at the two up front with the Celtic team that was behind them, go to the UEFA Cup final. Now think of all the Ryan, points we've we've done ahead. so well. Let's go one and one, mate. At the end, let's keep it balanced to keep the team gone. Okay. Both sides, we've got okay. most, we've got Larson yeah. in their prime. Yeah. Both yeah. suffered the same injury, by the way. Mm-hmm. But careers yeah. paths obviously failed differently. It could have been either way, mate. Larson might not have been able to recover, just like most. There's symmetry there, and I think putting them back in the team is a good wee symbol for our overall squad. Fine then. We'll go with just to keep it. Oh, hey! We'll go for it. We'll go for it. You've beat me easily. Purely I'm because. I'm telling you. We've been running for quite a while, and we've probably got to end at some point soon. <laughs> I would have argued so, this till like next uh, year, oh, by oh, the way. Oh, I kind of went for Sutton for ages. I mean, I know I feel disappointed. If, what if happens if Chris Sutton sits down and watches this video? What am I say? You probably say, "What's YouTube? Like how do how do I work this?" <laughs> Fair point. I mean, just to quickly run over the team. I mean, we've got so we have yeah. McGregor in goals. We've got Mike yep. Navarra at the right back. We've got Van Dijk mm-hmm. and Amoruso as our centre halves. Uh, we yep. have his name again at left Newman. back. Newman, that's it. Newman. Left back. Nakamura over up the right hand side. Ferguson Brown in the middle. Then we have George Alberts. Right on the left hand side. And then up front Michael Moles and Henrik Larson. That is a To be fair. They wouldn't be calling us tin pot if we could roll that squ- squad in there and they're primed in an English that, league. Exactly. If you took all of them in their prime, rolled down to England, you're looking at a title challenge on side. Right there. I mean, the question, question is, who do you give the armband to? I mean, we, I don't think we should sit all day here. Oh my God! How would you pick that in between those personalities? I mean, you've got one there Jesus. who has lifted soon to be eight league titles in a row. So. There's there's one there at Led Rangers, uh, not most, the most talented football team, by the way, against Barcelona, getting a draw when they had Ronaldinho and Xavi and Esther in their prime, <laughs> bet Leon home and away, they bet Sport and Lisbon away. He led them all the way to the European final. And they only lost, by the way, because the SFA made them play five games in, what is it, eight days, ten days? Mm. That's why. That's the only reason. Barry Fed. We'll just have no captain. We'll ask the comments. We'll ask the comments. We'll go that. that. Who, I mean, who? my comments are probably going to say Brown, right? So, I mean, you'd probably have to put up a, a tweet or something. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But aye, fantastic. Mm-hmm. And we've built a good team there. CJ, I'd like to thank you for coming on the channel. It's been an honour. Um, I look forward I like to doing that. more of this in the, the future. Hopefully, the comments section is nice to be nice to him. He's, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He tries his best. Bring it. <laughs> if you haven't joined us, like and subscribe make sure to go check out CJ's channel or the link will of course in the description and I'll see you all next time